So church, let us be confident in this faithfulness.
shed for me. There's no greater love than this. You have overcome the grave. Your glory fills the highest grace. What can separate me now? You go Speaker, 
He is the resident director of Ebenezer Bible College and Seminary. No other than Reverend Ricky Langari. Let's welcome him and listen the word of God through him. Good morning. My heart is overwhelmed this morning that finally I can speak God's word to Ebenezer Community Alliance Church. There were many attempts before, even the time of Pastor P.J. Diposa. However, just like any other Ebenezerians, it is a terrible or terrifying experience to stand on this stage. And it was the Lord's prompting, or the Lord, was con the Lord convicted me not to say no this time. And I am happy to finally become his mouthpiece to all of you today. Let us open our hearts and let us allow the Holy Spirit to speak to all of us. I know that God has a very special message for all of us, a message of invitation on how we ought to live our lives as Christians and as members of His church. Let us all bow down our heads and let us pray. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us this morning, being with us today. Lord, teach us to be humble, be our wisdom and understanding. Please help us, Lord, O oh God, to have a deeper appreciation of your word. Give us that excitement to listen to your still small voice. Above all, instill in us that burden to apply whatever we heard today. In Jesus' name, amen. There was a, sh a shocking event that happened in the early church. Everyone who saw it was completely terrified, the power and the Holy Spirit of God on display. This was when God revealed the sin of two men who conspired to commit something na siguro sa isip nila hindi malalaman ng iba. But the Holy Spirit revealed it, and after they were confronted with it, they died. First the one, or first the husband, shortly afterwards the wife. And these two men are Ananias and Sapphira. We can read that in the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And I am inviting all of you to open your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. It says here, Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also so sold a piece of property. With his wife's of full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest to put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? And after it was sold, wasn't the money as your, at your own disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died, and great fear seized all the one who heard what had happened. Then the young man came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. Verse, 11, verse 7, About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, How could you agree to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the man, the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young men came in and finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband's Body. Verse 11, great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. This is the word of the Lord. This event occurred at a remarkable time in the history of the early church. This was when Jesus had just recently ascended to heaven to be with his Father. The Pentecost had transpired. The promised Holy Spirit had descended upon the followers of Jesus Christ in an assembly, and the church has been born. It was during this remarkable time that the gospel of Jesus 
was exceedingly spreading. Thousands of people were being added to the church. And there was a growing church. Despite the presence of the persecution in the lives of the disciples, the testimony of God's grace and power was in the lives of the disciples. Before going to the central passage, the chapter 5 of the book of Acts, which we just read earlier, let us try to look at chapter 4. This is the chapter where we can find the followers of Jesus showing care for one another. The hearts of the people were so knitted together that they held all their possessions. They sold all their possessions voluntarily and willingly give it to those in need. Not because they were forced to, but because they loved one another. Because of that kind of motivation, because of that passion for one another, they sold all their possessions. Those who sold their lands and their houses gave their profits to the apostles who distributed the gifts to those in need. In the presence of the joy and the responding and responding to the call of the Holy Spirit, Satan tried to counterfeit it by motivating other people to act exactly away from the standard of God during that time. And this is what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. This morning, brethren, let us all reflect on what happened and take the lessons that we can possibly learn, especially as a church. Let us consider three important things this day. The first one is, the church should serve with a sincerity of motive. Again, the church should serve with a sincerity of motive. Ananias' name means God is gracious. His wife, Sapphira's name means fair or beautiful. We don't know anything else about their lives other than what we know in, accord in accordance to what we read in this passage. Upon reading this passage, a part of me, yes, a part of me says that apart from this terrible event, I think Ananias and Sapphira lived their lives in accordance to the will of the Lord. There came a point that they lived outstanding lives. I think they also had been good Christians and faithfully members of the church during that time or before this terrible thing or event happened. We have to remember first that they became part of the church and I know that they are one of the believers who were filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Second, the act of selling their possessions. We have to remember that this is a voluntary act. And you can read that in verse 1 that Ananias and Sapphira also sold their properties. No one compelled them to do it. Therefore, at once, they became a devoted member of Christ's church. And lastly, the way Peter approached them. In one way, Peter knew that they had been good Christians and yet this time had fallen to the influence of Satan. Brethren, if you can, if we will try to evaluate, there was a change of motive. There was, of course, a desire to do good works in the sight of men. Ananias did what he did clearly to be seen by others so that others might see how he and his wife Sapphira were so generous during that time that they were able to really sell their properties and give the proceeds to the church. You know, the moment that Peter revealed his action, no one saw their deceitful action. Walang nakakaalam. Walang nakakaalam kung ano ang nasa, kung ano ang motivation ni Peter during that time. Wala ding nakakaalam na kung ano yung binigay niya, hindi pala yun siya ang buong halaga na dapat ibigay ni Peter base sa kung ano ang declaration niya to the rest of the people. But it must be that the Holy Spirit who sees and knows all that is in his heart who revealed it. Ananias had a sinful motivation to look sacrificial before others and thought it was true that Satan, and though it was true that Satan had filled Ananias' heart to do it, Though it was true that Satan sought to capitalize on his sinful motivation, though it was true that Satan tried to 
somehow take advantage of Ananias' weakness, it was nevertheless Ananias himself that was responsible for allowing it to happen. And for thinking that he could lie to the majestic, holy, all-knowing spirit of the living God. Now the question, what is this to us? What is now the implication? What is the lesson that we can possibly learn from this? Brothers and sisters, this is one of the main things to take away from this passage. The Holy Spirit abides in the hearts of those who have placed their faith in Jesus. I know that we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and personal Savior and that the Holy Spirit is in us already. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is active and involved in everything that we do together in the name of God's Son. And we must never behave as if He does not know our motives. God sees every act done in secret. He hears every word spoken in quiet or knows every thought of every heart and of every mind. And He will evaluate those acts of service rightly. He has to judge it rightly. He, has, he always sees the sincerity of our motives. Are we giving our service to Him with a sincere motivation to only glorify Him, no more, no less? Are we serving the church? Are we doing or are we being part of the ministry, doing it simply because we want to obey and we want to glorify the Lord or we just want to somehow please other people and let, see other pe let other people see that indeed we are faithfully serving the Lord? We have to remember that God knows what is inside of our hearts and of our minds. He sees the kind of motivation that we have and we have to be careful because I know that God will judge or will somehow evaluate the kind of action or the kind of motivation that we have. Second, the church should serve without pretense. The church should serve without pretense. Luke tells us these words in verse 2 about Ananias' sale of this piece of land. In fact, it says here, And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. As I was reading the passage, I tried to ask myself, in fact, I also tried to ask this to Pastor Ethel, Is it wrong to keep back a portion of the proceeds? We must consider that the property is theirs, pagmamayari yun ni Ananias at Sapphira. First, the selling of the property was voluntary. They were not under compulsion during that time. They were not told to or they were not required to really do it, to really sell their property. They did it voluntarily. Second, nowhere you can find that they are required to bring the whole amount to the apostles. You cannot read that. In, uh, in the books of Acts chapter 5, they were not required that they are obliged to, they are not obliged to really give or they re really bring the whole of the proceeds. The decision to give the entire amount or half of the amount was all theirs to do. Yun ang dapat decision nila kasi pagmamayari nila yun. At walang makikialam kung magkano ba talaga ang pwede nilang dalhin doon sa church in order to extend help especially to those in need. Again, for me, they can even keep all the proceeds by themselves. Kung ayaw nilang ibigay, din ayaw nilang ibigay. Wala namang nag-obligar sa kanila na talagang uh, dalhin ang lahat na, da, na, na pagmamayari nila, especially uh, those proceeds from the sold lands or properties. But the question is, what is then the problem? Ano ba talaga ang problema? The problem there was Ananias pretended to have given all the proceeds. That's the problem. Because Ananias pretended that they have given all the proceeds from what was sold from their properties. He made it appear before men that they were faithful in giving all to the apostles for the work of the church. Yun yung problema. Kasi they made it appear na dinala nila lahat, lahat ng proceeds to the apostles fit in order to help other people. Now, we must remember that in verse 3, Peter confronted him by saying that he lied to the Holy Spirit. In fact, it was recognized by Peter that the money was at Ananias' disposal. 
Ananias has the responsibility, even has the right to decide whether to give the whole, the half, the quarter of the amount to the church. And this hypocritical show may have fooled some, but to Peter, who was filled by the presence of the Holy Spirit during that time, he knew, he knew exactly that Peter, that Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit. Peter knew that Ananias was lying not just to him, but to God, and exposed this hypocrisy then and there, that very moment. And Ananias fell and died, the same what happened to his wife, Sapphira. Implications, or the lesson that we can learn. God's reason for bringing about the deaths of Ananias and Sapphira bring a message that he hates sin. We know all, we, all of us knew that God hates sin. This becomes the lesson for the rest of the church, both then and now. It shows that God is serious regarding the sin of hypocrisy in serving Him and His church. Most of these pretensions are motivated by giving glory to self. God exactly knew and He is so serious that His people or the members of the church or the church itself should not, serve, should not serve other people or should not serve Him with pretense because He knew exactly that pretensions are motivated by giving glory to oneself, showing to people that we faithfully serve the Lord, yet our hearts are full of deceit and our hearts are full of lies. People in the church serve for people to exalt them. We wa they wanted to serve the church. They wanted to see other people that they are faithful in serving the Lord. They wanted, to see the, they wanted the members of the church to see that they are generous enough. That's why every time, okay, the church call for the offertory, okay, they wanted other people that they are giving large amount to the church. Others also pretended to somehow volunteer themselves to be part of the ministry, and yet at the end of the day, their motivation is not right. And this particular sin of hypocrisy or pretense is not what God designs the church to be. And we must be fully aware of this as we serve Him through the church and the people. The third one, and the last one, the church should serve with a deep accountability with a deep accountability at the beginning of the sermon i said to all of you that this is a conspired sin Sapphira was very much aware of what happened you can read that in verse 2 and in verse 7 to 10 we can see how peter confronted ananias he did the same to Sapphira. the issue the result was the same death Sapphira's attention was called. What happened to her husband already came to the knowledge of the people. And I could have imagined, okay, the commotion on the gathering or in that area or in that place, the commotion during the assembly. As he walked in, she could have noticed the reaction of the people around her. It was her chance to somehow reflect and somehow try to evaluate what she needs to do and we need, she needs to tell to Peter. Then the moment come when Peter confronted her, she could have repented. She could have told the truth, but instead she carried the lie forward. And she continued her partnership in her husband's lie. Now for me, this is an issue of tolerance. Sorry, but for me, I think this is an issue of tolerance. Safira did this maybe because Ananias was her husband or perhaps because she also had the same motivation as her husband. Because of this, Ananias became blind to not seeing what he did was a sin. Because of, because of Safira tolerating Ananias, this time Ananias became blind to not seeing that what he did is a sin. He was not confronted or warned about the work of Satan, that his heart was already filled with lies from Satan. 
There was no other person who can stop him from doing so at that very moment than his wife. It's supposed to be Safira who will rebuke his husband. But Safira did not do it. Indeed, greater accountability was absent during that time. Now let's try to evaluate ourselves. What is then the message of the Lord? Sometimes, this becomes one of the issues of the church, the wrong perception of accountability. Accountability is supposed to be a way for members to discuss, evaluate, and accept counsel and feedback to another or to encourage a closer personal walk with God. This is supposed to be our ministry, okay? When we talked about our accountability, as a member of the church, as a pastor of the church, if we see someone not doing the right thing, it is our obligation not maybe to confront but also to, but somehow to counsel the person, just to remind the person that, oops, you are not doing the right thing. And that is our obligation. That, uh, I think that is the meaning of accountability. For us to, not just to provide appreciation, for us not just to provide praises, but somehow for us to provide feedbacks, counsel, for us to rebuke one another in, or us, in order for all of us to continually have a personal or closer walk with God. It is the time to develop support, to develop trusting relationship with other believers, especially when it comes to biblical wisdom, direction, and rebuke. rebuke. We have to remember that, and that is our responsibility. But sad to say, in most of the churches today, pastors and the rest of the members do not want to confront, do not want to rebuke, do not want to remind other members of the church, other co-workers of the church, simply because they wanted to please other people. And I don't think it is accountability. One writer said, accountability in the church does not involve an expectation of tolerance. Rather, accountability is a commitment to worship and minister the body of believers accountable to pursue obedience to what Scripture teaches. Again, it is our responsibility, okay? It is our commitment as members of the church, as pastors of the church, to worship and minister the body of believers and to continually be accountable to all the believers to pursue Christ and to teach what is right in the hearts of the church. This is what we need in the church right now, brethren, and this is what we need to do as members of the church. In conclusion, God or has great fear come upon us when we came to read the passage, the same reaction as to the people who were at that moment, has the lesson sunk into our hearts? Our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, is to be revered today by His church. We have seen how the Holy Spirit revealed the sin of Ananias and Sapphira that even cost their lives. When the people in the assembly saw this happening, great fear seized all of them. Great fear seized the whole church. This reverent fear should always be in our hearts, brethren. God will never tolerate sin. Please remind this to the person at your right or at your left. God will never tolerate sin. He will do whatever is necessary to protect the holiness of our Savior's cause. He wants to establish that we, as God's holy people, must never try to lie to the Holy Spirit. It was done to teach us always to serve first, to serve with a sincere motive. We should serve Him genuinely out of a sincere reverence of Him because we respect Him, because we worship Him, because He is our God. This means that our effort should not merely be given to win favor from other men, but rather out of our dedication, out of our commitment, passion, out of our obedience and love to the Lord. That should be our sincere motive 
because we want to obey the Lord. Second, we sh should serve without pretense. Don't try to impress others with our godliness. We are generous, we are godly, we are holy. Let them know that we are also weak, but we are just living under the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Like the rest of the members of the church, let us always see ourselves the way. Or we, are, we always see ourselves that we are all redeemed only by the grace and love of God. And we should treat each other equally. We should not try to pretend that we are more holy, that we are more godly, that we are more generous. But we should serve the Lord with all humility, accepting all our weaknesses, humbling ourselves before the Lord that we can do nothing without Him, and serving Him with all humility, with a sincere motive, without pretense that our motivation is only to glorify the Lord. And the last one, we should serve with deep accountability. Let us together worship and minister the body of believers accountable to pursue obedience to God. Let us bear each other's burden at the same time accept the counsel of each other. We should be accountable with our brothers and sisters. For the pastors, we should be accountable with our co-workers. We should be accountable to the rest of the members of the church. To the church officers, you are accountable to us pastors. You are also accountable to the church. Members, do not try to say to yourself that you are just members of the church. You will just accept what, be, what is being told, to, uh, told uh, the church to do. I think you also have the responsibility to somehow be accountable to the church ministry team and to your pastors in one way or the other. That is the less, that, these are the lessons that we need to inculcate, that we need to somehow apply to each of our lives as we pursue Christ and as we journey with Him in the days to come. May the grace of our Lord be upon this church, Ebenezer Community Alliance Church, as we carry these teachings of Christ as one community. May God bless us all and good day. Hello, good day everyone. We would like to praise and thank the Lord for this opportunity that He has given us to testify of His goodness and of His love especially during our COVID-19 experience last month. So there are a lot of things that we really would want to praise the Lord uh, for all the things that He has done to us as a family. But we would like to highlight a few things that we would want to share with you today. So first, the Lord is good and He remains to be good even when our circumstances were not. So um, as a family of six, with my mama and my sister Chanel with us, living with us, four of us tested positive for COVID-19. Um, we do not know, uh, we would not be able to trace as to where we got the virus, where we contacted the virus. Um, but then it happened and four of us got infected. But despite our not so good circumstances, despite the things that we went through, uh, the Lord our God remains to be good and we are assured of that. Second is, God allowed us to experience mild to moderate symptoms so we can testify God's healing power. So yun, uh, yung, uh, sa akin talaga nag-start yung, ano eh, yung first symptoms na naramdaman ko is meron akong headache and then fever pero nag-last siya ng mga 2 to 3 days and then after nun nawala na. And then the next day, si Annie nagkaroon siya ng headache and fever. And back pains. And back pains. And on the third day, uh, medyo na-alarm na kami kasi nagkaroon na siya ng loose bowel. So, yun. I had loose bowel movements for two days. And then there were also some um, rushes, unexplainable rushes na tumubo lang any parts in any parts of my body. So, I uh, was really, um, I was really, ano na, con, um, ano tawag niyan? Confirmed na na I had COVID but I was afraid to consult Doc Sam 
basically because uh, I was afraid to get swapped. I knew that Doc Sam will um, tell me to uh, have myself tested. But on the second day of my loose bowel movement, ayun nga, medyo nag-worry na kami. So, I consulted Dr. Sam and true enough, uh, immediately he asked me to go to Ciudad Medical and have myself tested. And um, the day after, that was May 13 when I got swabbed, and the day after, May 14, uh, we received the dreaded call from Ciudad Medical. And um, amazing how God just prepared my heart for that dreaded news. The personal said, hello ma'am, uh, sorry po, uh, you tested positive po for COVID, okay lang po ba kayo? Pasensya na po ma'am. And I was like, opo, okay lang po ako, wala pong problema, thank you po. I, and the personal was really worried no, sa akin kasi of course alam nila yung mga implications of are receiving the positive result for COVID. But that afternoon, while I was waiting for the result, result, uh, God just prepared my heart. Um, I was actually singing Laura Story's uh, song, Na Blessings. And then I was also strumming with my ukulele, the song Steel from Hillsong. And that actually uh, helped me. Uh, so when I received the news, I had a calm heart already. And parang alam ko na eh, parang ina-expect ko na. So, yun. And then third, God allowed us to be quarantined for 21 days so we can testify of His generosity and love. Uh, all throughout our quarantine season, we really felt God's generous provision to our family from providing us with a place where I can be isolated because when I tested positive, the CHO immediately instructed that I be pulled out from our house because we have a senior citizen, si Mama was with us, and they don't want na uh, ma-infect pa or maka-infect pa ng ibang members of the family, uh, which later on we found out na it was too late. And the school, the administration um, actually made action right away and allowed me to use the dispensary for as my isolation facility and that was really a big blessing uh, for me and for my family also um there were people god used a lot of different people to provide for our needs from groceries to our um even our laundry needs um there were vegetables there were fruits even cakes that were put placed on the table outside um, for us and never we never uh, experienced God's lacking provision because it was always overflowing and we are thankful for the ECAC family who specifically um, sent us and you know did the groceries for us so thank you so much for your love and for your generosity to our family also we were blessed with people who rallied behind our backs in prayers we are really comforted knowing that a lot of people are praying for us and it really uh, helped us in our recovery period <clears throat> fourth is um, god allowed jazzy and chanel to to be tested negative so we can testify of god's sovereignty we would never be able to explain how and why they tested negative especially jazzy uh, she's just five and she's the only one who did not manifest any symptom uh, in our family. And she was the most exposed. Exposed siya sa akin, exposed siya kay June, exposed siya kay AJ because they are sharing one room. Exposed siya to mama, to her nanay. But then God in his amazing power no, just paired her and allowed her to be tested negative. At first we thought... Uh, it was difficult, it will be difficult because we will have to make sure that she will remain um, uh, virus free. But then we realized na tama nga naman yung prayer ng bata, no? na it is only Jesus who can protect her from the virus. And uh, we praise the Lord because the, that child has that faith and that faith actually protected her from being infected. And then fifth, God allowed us as a family to go through this difficult time so we can proclaim the kind of God we, have, we are serving. One of the highlights um, that 
we had uh, during this COVID-19 ordeal was the platform that was given to us uh, by God to share Jesus to our unbelieving friends. So we received a lot of um, messages, a lot of uh, private messages, private texts, and some actually offered words of comfort, words of encouragement. But there were also those who were hopeless and who just lost the will to fight over the, the dreaded virus. And so that gave us the opportunity to share about God's love, to share about God's grace and His mercy. And we praise the Lord because despite our trying time situation, He used it uh, despite the testings that we were going through that time. He used it so it can become a testimony and it, it can become a channel of blessings to other people, especially those uh, whom, who, those people who, who do not believe Him at first, did not believe Him, and now um, they are slowly, uh, they are slowly digesting the grace of how the grace of God works, how the mercy of God was able to penetrate especially during their darkest times also. And lastly, the God we are serving is a prayer answering God. So yun, uh, <clears throat> since kami yung close contact ni Ani, na swap din kami, but after, uh, yung prayer talaga namin nun is kaming lahat sa bahay mag-negative. Pero after 4 days, lumabas na yung result, nag-positive ako, si Mama and AJ. So, parang sudden kami konti sa nalaman namin na news kasi nga uh, yung prayer namin is mag-negative pero nag-positive kami. <clears throat> pero later, na-realize namin na uh, yun pala yung way ni Lord para magkasama-sama kami ni Ani sa bahay which is nakatulong sa amin para maging fast yung recovery. So, yun na-realize namin na yung answer ni Lord is hindi siya according sa gusto namin but according siya sa plan and purpose ni Lord yes um, it may be true no that it saddened especially me because while I was in the dispensary I was really crying to the Lord and I was asking him to just spare my family uh, okay na ako na ako na lang yung nagka-COVID nagka um, I was asking him to spare my family to just keep them protected but he answered those prayers with a no. It had it saddened me, but it did not dishearten me in any way. Because um, when things were slowly sinking in, I realized that it was actually a blessing in disguise. Because instead of spending 14 days in the isolation, it was shortened to 9 days. And when I was finally home, um, the recovery uh, sa amin became faster parang mas nagquicken yung recovery namin now that we are together and now that we can look out after each other so we still praise the lord no praise the lord na nagpositive sila and it uh despite the fact na nagpositive sila that positive supposedly na bad news siya nagkaroon siya ng positive effect to our family so yun and there are a lot of things that we are still thankful to the lord but we would like to keep it that way and uh, we would like to encourage everyone that uh, we need to be extra cautious and extra uh, mindful, especially of the health and health and safety protocols. No, um, if we feel something, do not hesitate because, of course, as much as we would want to protect our family, uh, we need to also be mindful na to report or to seek uh, medical attention, medical advice in case meron tayong mga nararamdaman. But I uh, would like to encourage everyone that we all may be infected, we all can be infected, the virus is real, and um, it's just around, hindi natin alam kung nasaan siya, but we have a God, a great God, um, who is in control, and He will continue to be in control, even when our circumstances are beyond our control. So to God be the glory, great things He has done, and he alone deserves all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you so much and good morning.
it's hard to provide our needs. Papa and Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Happy Father's Day, Lola and Ninang Jojo, and Happy Father's Day, Papa. I love you. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rian Rose. My name is Kyle. Ito ang tanong ko. Sino ang pinakagwapong lalaki sa buong mundo? Si Papa! Sino naman ang pinakamasipag? Si Papa! Sino naman ang pinakamatapang? Si Papa! I love you, Papa Raymar! Happy Father's Day! Who is your hero? Daddy. Who is the handsome? Daddy. What is your message to your daddy? Happy Father's Day. Happy. I love you, daddy. I love you so much. Daddy. Question number one. Sino ang taong pinakagwapo sa iyo? Tatay ko po. Sino ang pinakamahal na mahal mo? Tatay ko po, anong masasabi mo po po sa papa mo? Thank you pag paalaga sa akin at thank you pinapakain niyo ako. I love you so much. Happy birthday to the world. You are a dad. To our family. You are the world. Happy Father's Day, Dad. I love you, Dad. Father is neither an anchor to hold us back, nor a sail to take us there, but a guiding light whose love shows us the way. Happy Father's Day, Dad. And Dad. First question, who taught you how to draw? Daddy. And then, who is the most handsome guy? A little bit, Dad. A little bit. And last question, who is your number one love? Jesus. About number two. Mommy and a little bit daddy. A little bit daddy. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. We love you. We love you. Jay, Jay, Jay. Ano? Ano nakuha mo kay Papa? Papa. Talaga? Anong gustong-gusto mong ginagawa with Papa? Okay. Anong gusto mong sabihin ngayon sa kanya? Happy Father's Day, Papa! My father is very hardworking. Happy Father's Day! Sino yung expert? Daddy. Sino yung ano, angry bird sa bahay? Sino yung kulang sa patience? Pa rin si Daddy. <laughs> so, anyways, I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day and I love you. Who is the best cook? Papa. Papa. Who is the best provider? Jesus. Who else? Papa. Papa. And who is the best papa in the world? Papa. Papa. Happy Father's Papa. Day, Papa. We love you. Sino ka po po para sa iyo? Papa. Sino ang taong mahal na mahal? Papa po. Sana ang masasabi mo sa iyo, Papa. Ang uh, Papa, nagpapapasalamat po ako dahil sa lahat ng bagay po andyan kayo. Kahit pagod na po kayo. And happy Father's Day po, Papa. I love you so much. Sino ang pinaka-importante ang lalaki sa buhay mo? Si Papa po. Sa tingin mo, sino ang pinakapoging lalaki sa buhay mo? Si Papa. Anong masasabi mo tungkol sa Papa mo? Ang masasabi ko lang po sa kanya, kahit may problema, huwag ba sa masasukuan, tsaka nagtitank you din ako sa sacrifice niya sa amin. And I love you po, Pa. Happy Father's Day. Anong importante sa buhay mo? Si Papa. Sino ang pinakamamahal mo? Si Papa. Anong masasabi mo? Maraming maraming salamat 
Pa, I love you so much. Happy Father's Day. Ano ba sa buhay mo? Si Papa. Sino ang pinaka-poging lalaki sa buhay mo? Si Papa. Ano masasabi mo sa Papa mo? Uh, thank you sa lahat at sa pag-suporta sa amin. And happy Father's Day. I love you. Ano importante sa buhay mo? Si Papa po. Sino ang pinakamahal mo? Si Papa po. Ano masasabi mo sa patay mo? Thank you pa sa lahat sa lahat. I love you too. Happy Father's Day pa. Papa, love mo. Si Papa, ano mo sa mo sa tatay mo? Thank you pa sa lahat, lahat pa and happy pa this day. Thank you. Who is the Superman? Papa! Who is the super guapo in the house? Papa! Who is the lover of Mama? Dudong, Inday, and Jaja? Hi, Danny. Who made you love anime? My father. Who made you love rock and roll? My father. Who is your superhero? My father. God bless you on your work, Dad. I love you and happy Father's Day. Oh. Happy, happy Father's Day, Day Daddy Joe! Loving! Thank you for caring! Thank you for being the best dad, dad in, in the, the world. world! We love okay. you, Daddy! Happy Father's Day! Hi everyone! Since it's Father's Day, we are going to be answering some questions. For the first question, do you love your father? Yes, I do love my father very much. How about you? Yes, of course I love my father. For the second question, why do you love your father? For me, I love my father very much because he's a very caring person who always lifts us up whenever we are down. And he's a man full of faith. How about you? Why do you love your father? I love my father because whenever we go through trials or tribulations, our father is always there to encourage us and help us push forward. And for the last question, how can you help your father when the time comes? I can help my father by encouraging him whenever he is stressed because I will always remember that when we are worried or stressed, our father was always there to encourage us. How about you? For me, I can help my father whenever my father needs the help, like in household chores or encouraging him whenever he feels down. Father, happy Father's Day and not only to you but to all fathers out there. Thank you for watching. Sino nag-guide at saka nag-support sa atin? Si Papa! Sino yung love natin? Si Papa! Sino yung pinakagwapo? Wala na si Papa! Papa! Happy Father's Day! Who is the most fearful? Who is the most amazing? <laughs> Foggy. Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Tatay. Love, love. Hey. When you were younger, who were you most likely to ask help from when you are having trouble with an assignment? Papa. Who are you most likely to get your creativity from? Papa. It's family movie night. Who's most likely to fall asleep before the movie ends? Papa. Happy Father's Day. Sino ang pinaka-patient? Si Papa! Who supports me in my dreams? My father! Who always brings snacks? Papa! Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day! Day. Happy Father's Day! Wow! Let's celebrate the Father's Day! Kaso sana dito tayo lahat ngayon. But 
Thank God for the young people sa ginawa din nila for the fathers. And ipag-pray na lang natin ang ating mga father. But before that, we have announcement that this afternoon, meron po tayong Converge Youth. So, by uh, Google Meet, kaya mga young people, mamaya meron kayong uh, Converge. At ang inyong speaker ay si Nicole Sally. So, yan lang ating mga announcement. At saka, let us continue to, to pray for our brethren na makarecover na sila. Fully recovered yung mga nagkaroon ng mga sakit, ramdaman. pag natin sila. At this time, may I request all the fathers na nandun sa mga bahay nila. Mga tatay, Rini na ba kayo dyan? So, may I request you to listen or kung ano dyan kayo, gusto nyo tumayo, pwede kayong tumayo, pwede nyo itaas mga kamay nyo, pwede rin. Dahil mag-pray tayo para sa mga tatay ngayon. So, mga anak, pag-pray natin mga tatay natin, mga, mga wife, so, Pag-pray natin ang, mga, ang husband natin. Ayun, let's pray for them. Father God, thank you so much for this opportunity that you have given to us to pray for our Father, to remember them, to acknowledge them. Talaga nga, Lord, na hindi basta-basta ang maging tatay. Ngunit alam ko, Panginoon, na ito po yung naintindihan dahil ikaw po ay aming Heavenly Father. So Lord, this time we remember all our fathers saan man sila naroon, Panginoon, we pray for them. Lord, I pray that our Father will continue to stand in their faith as a head of the family that in the midst of all trials, tatayo sila, Panginoon. Matibay at patuloy mo po silang gabayan na maging sinsiro sa kanilang pananampalataya. Katulad ng minsaheng narinig po namin kanina, kanina, Panginoon, na ang mga tatay namin ay talagang sinsir sa kanilang pananampalataya, sa kanilang pagserbisyo sa iyo, Panginoon. Lord, Aki pong tinataas sa iyo ang aming mga tatay dahil mahirap ang aming katayuan as head of the family. Lalo na sa mga problema na hinaharap namin po, Panginoon. Mga pagsubok na hinaharap namin, Panginoon. Lalo na sa panahong ito, sa crisis na ito, sa pandemyang ito, Panginoon. Kailangan po namin ang dagdag kalakasan. Extra strength po, Panginoon upang mapatagumpayan namin ang mga pagsubok na aming hinaharap po, Panginoon. Ang mga tatay po ay patuloy na maglingkod sa iyo, Panginoon, na mayroong matibay na pananampalataya at gabayan niyo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Ilayo po kami sa temptation, Panginoon, at kung madapa man, tatayo po kami at patuloy na magserbisyo sa iyo, Panginoon. Kaya, Lord, salamat sa buhay ng mga tatay na pinili mo na maging tatay, Panginoon. At sa mga maging tatay pa, Panginoon, patuloy niyo po silang uh, gabayan at patuloy niyo po silang uh, i-bliss ang kanilang buhay at ang mga testimonya sa pamamagitan ng aming buhay, marami ding tao ang siyang mabless, Panginoon. Kaya, I pray for all the fathers, Lord, may you continue to bless them, may you continue to guide them. And now, I also pray for the church, may the Lord bless you and keep you, may the Lord will continue to
to be gracious unto you, and the Holy Spirit will continue to be with us till the end of nights. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen.